and welcome to Help Yourself to Help. <laughs> <laughs> we jumped in. Good afternoon. And again, uh, Lori and I are here, Chuck Havlicek here. Uh, we also have Cheryl Scott, who is the authoress and uh, uh, chief, uh, chief cook and moral and spiritual advisor with the Help Guide. And that's what we're going to be talking about, a primary element of our topic today, which is how you as an Aceware user of Student Manager or Aceweb can help yourself to help. So again, we're glad you're here. We're going to get started. I get my arrow, on, pink arrow. I, I tell you, interesting, all of my colors here. So uh, moving through. So what do we've got today? Um, number one, we want to talk about the help team and how you are not alone. Um, uh, go through help resources, uh, and of course, we'll mainly focus on the new, improved, enhanced online help guide. We'll talk about how to stay in touch, uh, use all of the ACEWARE resources available to you, and then talk about uh, dealing with emergency calls. And again, if you have an emergency situation, and we won't get into what constitutes an emergency, we'll let you make that call. Uh, and then give what we think is a kind of a top ten list of how you can help your tech in terms of getting the help that you might be looking for and how to use Aceware to make your business more productive. So that's what we're about, as always. Uh, Lori is monitoring the chat. If you have questions, we'll invite that. And Cheryl, I'll ask you to keep me honest on the uh, uh, comments I make. If there's something I'm off base on, pipe it up. So. Uh, the help team. Well, first of all, uh, you have help. You're not alone when you're talking about using Aceware. You've got a team behind you. Uh, one of those is your Aceware staff, and obviously your Aceware tech. So, I'll be happy to show you a, a slideshow about an Aceware tech at, as we close here. Uh, certainly, the other one is your online help available, and that again is where we're going to be talking about. The online help guide is one of the main elements that we want to reintroduce you to because there have been some updates to it. Um, we also want to talk about your own Keeper of the Flame. And many of you have heard us talk about Keeper of the Flame. Uh, the idea of the Keeper or the, 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 the term Keeper of the Flame really refers to the person at your organization who is your primary contact. And again, whether you call them a project manager, a key operator, a point of contact, it's the person at your shop. And, and many of you are that keeper of the flame who is the advisor. Now again, if you're a new user and you say, well, gosh, I'm not sure who our keeper of the flame is, and it, whoever you call that person, but again, you do need to have a leader, supervisor, kind of a crew leader, if you would, related to the use of Aceware at your organization. I mean, uh, you've, you've got to have some leader, you've got to have somebody kind of an organizer, wrangler, scout leader who kind of works with that particular group. So again, that keeper of the flame, and if you are that person, then of course your role is to help people get to these resources that we're going to be talking about. The other part of the picture is you. And again, you as an end user, and if you're the keeper of the flame, your staff who use Aceware, there are things they can be doing to make sure that they get better help. And whether that's coming up through you as a contact of keeper of the flame or going directly to the tech in the case of a small organization, you as a user are an integral part of the solution here. So, all right. So, what are the resources available to you from Aceware? And again, we're primarily looking here, if you would, at the web help or the online help. And again, these are all free, uh, again, with the paid support agreement. Number one, access to the online help guide. Uh, the webinar series that you're participating in now. So we're, if we would, preaching to the choir on that. The videos available through our Aceware YouTube channel and the annual conference. You say, well, that, that costs money. Well, if you've got a support agreement paid up through Aceware of the executive level, you actually get a free registration to the annual conference. And I'm pleased to say many of you have been to the conference. Some of the other kind of help available, again, are private web training, on-site training, 
the annual conference again for supplemental registrations. And I guess the other thing I should add is the ACEWARE Enterprise Consulting. And um, I may bring that up at the end. Uh, I think a couple of your programs have actually participated in that. But again, it's basically an operations review service uh, that we offer to ACEWARE customers, especially those who have used ACEWARE for a while and uh, might be wanting to evaluate some of their procedures. So um, online help, and this is where we're happy to uh, introduce you, reintroduce you to uh, the new online help reference guide. And again, uh, Cheryl, I think the major update of this was done in the past month and a half, six weeks. Uh, we've been doing a little bit of editing on this, You'll note this is going to look, this looks a, a little bit different from some of the previous layouts of this. We continue to try to work to help make it easier, and we're going to spend some time reviewing this. Um, so how do you get there? How do you get to the online help? Well, from the ACEWARE website, you can click the link SM Online Help, and it's also under the support link. From the student manager screen, you can actually click on the little red book right inside the student manager screen. <clears throat> and um, Lori, at this point, I think you've got a couple of polls here available. Um, shoot one of them out, uh, trying to think which one is which, and if you'd recommend putting either one now or, or doing them later. Uh, we would like to know when was your last visit to online help? There you go. So I believe you're posting that here for the view then? Yeah, it's just taking a moment. So, but there taking it is. Moment. When was your last there visit to online help? Okay. Today, this week, within the last two years, this year, and you have online help? <laughs> I, I always well, leave that last one. We're, we're hoping that never. not many people <laughs> respond to that last one. So, Okay. And how are we doing? Audience view, everybody's paying attention, making the mark. And again, what's the most recent time you visited online help? So that'll kind of give us an idea within the last two weeks. Uh, they would have seen the new one. If it's been longer than that, they might not have, might not have been there. So, okay. All right. Lori, we're getting close. Let's, 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 let's close this up. Close. Hold on a minute. I got windows open here all over the place. All, all over the place. Yeah, I don't know what happened to me here. Okay, let's close it and show you the results. There we go. <gasps> all right. Yeah, so well, that's have great. have online help. Oh. We've all, <laughs> well, we've got the majority of folks have been referencing, so you haven't seen the new one, and hopefully we'll help you um, – we'll help you um, – uh, learn how to use it even better. All right, now we're going to the help menu items. And I'm going to bring out a I'm going to bring the system up so that we've got the live one setting here right behind us. So all right, we got the online help up here. Um, again, so what do we have for the guide? First of all, if you look at the top part of your help guide, the reference guide to home, if you're navigating you want to go back to the main screen, of course, the home button will take you there. Get my little pointer. Uh, the next one is some information on how to use the guide, the question mark. Glossary of student manager terms. Uh, the next tab is the toggle, where you can toggle between the uh, contents pane and uh, the, the current layout. And basically what that does is that you, you, this is the new view. If you want to see the old menu or the former menu style, if you toggle the contents, you'll see over here on the right, the, this is the contents uh, format that we used to have before. And the SM123 is intended to be kind of a sequence. If you're a new program and you're wanting to go through the basics, you'll see here, basics, adding courses, registering individuals. This is kind of a, um, a one, two, three approach of how you might start using your student manager. And again, you can either use the panel toggle 
or you can use the little thumbnail over on the right to move back and forth to bring in that panel. And again, the how to use this guide gives you some tips on the system. We've talked about the glossary of terms so that we kind of identify what the terms are that we're using as you're, as you're moving through this. <clears throat> All right, so the uh, toggle, this is going back to the idea of how the toggle works to bring that, that panel. We talked about the glossary of terms. And then the highlighter. Um, if you are searching, if you are searching for a phrase uh, in the text, uh, the system by default will highlight that phrase in the body of the help. If you want to hide the highlighting, you can uh, click the highlight icon and the, the highlighting will go away. Um, let me, I guess, let me go back and do an example of that. So if we were to go, I'm going to hit home or we're back to home. If I want to search for credit card and I'm going to go ahead and show you what this does in advance. This is a way to uh, narrow the search. So if we said, I want credit card just relating to um, payments or reporting or registration. So if we said credit cards related to the payment area, and then we hit the search button, we're going to begin to get some results. And those results are coming up. The web is everybody must be beating on the web because we're I think we're oh okay, the little the little circle in the middle. Here we go. So we've got processing credit cards. So now if you'll note that we're inside the credit card, this is where the highlighter. Every time the credit card appears, the highlight is there. And if you say, Well, I don't like that, remove the highlights. <clears throat> and that also, I think, if you're going to print the doc, uh, would clean up the view. So that's what the highlighter does, the ability to do the search. So again, back to the, uh, uh, the navigation. You can type in a search uh, field, a search value up here in the user area. Oh, let me get back. You can uh, focus the search area by picking a area from the dropdown, emailing the topic to another user. You have an email tool. And you can actually print the topic so that if you've got a particular need or you've got a person who really wants that hard copy, <clears throat> or you want to print it from your office and take it home and, and read it in the train or commuting or uh, you know while you're snuggled in uh, in this cool weather, Watching, watching TV, uh, you can look through that. After all, Lori, doesn't everybody uh, take their ace or manual home to read while they're watching TV? So I have one in several places, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, any questions, anything going on right now in the chat mode? No, we're very good. Thank you. OK, well, I'm going to, and again, I'm kind of go through the overview of it, and then perhaps we can go back and do some more interaction with the live, uh, the live website. Because again, um, that particular site is open for you guys anytime, day or night, 24-7. Again, there is no charge to use that. That's part of the service you're getting uh, for paying your support agreement. And uh, you're really making that available for anybody else in the system. <clears throat> All right. So uh, moving through the slideshow. Um, the other resource for you, now we're going to leave the online help and go back to the regular Aceware uh, tool set, webinar archives. And again, you guys are here. You're watching the webinar. If you're viewing this webinar from the archive, we've got them all available out here to you. So again, um, under, under the webinar area, that would be under the customers or under the support is the webinar archive. The other resources are events, trainings, webinars. Um, uh, the users conference are listed on the web page under the events side. I'm going to go ahead and jump back to live on that and bring up the Aceware website again. So <clears throat> back to the webinars under customers webinar archive or support webinar archive, you can navigate to the archive 
and browse through the different uh, the different reports or the different webinar elements. And again, Cheryl, just an FYI, for some reason the hover doesn't bring up the description of the uh, webinar now. So normally when you hover over the webinar title, uh, you'll get a pop out of a description of that webinar. All right. Moving on down, we've got the events, user events, upcoming webinars, and then the YouTube videos. Now, the YouTube videos, how many people, I'm going to do a show of hands. Lori, do you have a, a, a poll on what different things you've used? I forget what our other poll was. Uh, we did a poll on whether you had downloaded something nope. from the webinar archive. Okay, well, let's go ahead and bring that up. We just got done with the archives. I'm going to go into the YouTube video, but bring up that poll on if you've ever downloaded uh, to look at a or viewed a webinar from the webinar archive. Uh, you guys are, are good about staying with live webinars, and let's see if you've, uh, we're just curious if you've gone back for ones that you've missed uh, to go look at a webinar. So. So we'll let people respond to that. There is 40%. All right. So we'll give it another couple of seconds so we can right. get the, uh, the majority. And again, uh, if you've got anybody in a group, if you're watching it with another group, uh, you can count their experience as part of what you guys have been doing. Counting not in its normal mode. Oh, it, really? It went from like 40 to 50, to, and then 50 to 55. So it, it's it's slow today. It's not. Um, it's just, Lori is, of course, the webinar the webinar manager, and so she's actually seeing you type in your your notes or your responses. So, all right, we close. We close. We've already closed. 55 to 62 percent. We're going to give it another 10. Oh, guys, come on! I, I if you're not sure about this, we're we're going to. We're gonna have I don't to, think it's them. I think it's GoToMeeting. Oh, you just think the GoToMeeting is slow. So, all right. So we won't uh, blame it on uh, you possible. guys being no. slow. Not enough coffee at lunch or too much too much carbohydrates at lunch. So shouldn't have had that dessert. <laughs> all right. We're going to go ahead and close it, and I will share the results with you. All right. So okay. we have had fairly good, fairly good. And, and again, you guys are indeed our poster children for children for using the help and taking advantage of the webinars. So speaking of YouTube, so again, going back to the YouTube component is that when you're on our website, under the customer side, there is a video learning series. And this is through our YouTube channel. So again, these are short. Uh, and, and again, these are generally very focused um, YouTube videos, generally three to seven or ten minutes at the max, where you can actually focus on a particular, and see, it, even again, Laurie, this is slow responding. I'm live right now, but the, the YouTube is not bringing up the thumbnail here even. So, uh, well, I guess that tells you then, it tells you how, uh, how many minutes uh, the webinar is. So. Uh, but again, that's a resource available. You can go to YouTube, search for Aceware, and that will bring up the uh, all the different videos that are available to you on YouTube. Uh, annual conference. And again, we've got a bunch of you I know that have been to annual conference. I am going to go back now. It, just before we leave the YouTube video, uh, I'm going to do a show of hands. If you would, Raise your hand if you have looked at a YouTube video in the past year, just if you've even gone out and looked at a YouTube video in the past year. Now, again, you guys are probably more the heavy users. One of the things, if you're the keeper of the flame or you've, you're responsible for helping new users at your shop, you might want to go in, take a look at the contents, go look at the topic areas under the YouTube area, and then if you've got a, a staff member who says, well, I'd like to learn how to do, or what about this proxy registration bit, you can point them to the YouTube area and have them go in and take a look at that and, again, uh, help get them up to speed and, and without you needing to take the double time if, if you've got plenty of things to do to help them out. 
All right. I am not seeing. Well, we've got just a handful of folks who have signed up, so <clears throat> who have done that. So uh, we're we're glad you are. It is that resource available for you. Annual conference again uh, this year. We're going to be Myrtle Beach uh, the third week of April. We have a great time. We're working on a great program there. The uh, uh, request for uh, proposals, I think, is out. I think we'll even take a few more if those haven't been turned in. So watch for that. How do you stay in touch with um, new happenings that are going on at Aceware? Uh, again, multiple ways. We've got forums. Um, we've got the listserv. Uh, we have a newsletter. Facebook page, and certainly the annual conference is a great way to connect with other users, find out how you can take advantage of all the things that Aceware, Student Manager, Aceweb have to offer you. <clears throat> and again, uh, from the website, basically the stay in touch side. This is where you can go to newsletter sign up, you can look at past newsletters, sign up to our LinkedIn page, Facebook page, take a look at our YouTube channel. And the forums, I want to make sure we've got that reference. The Aceware forums are a great resource. These are ones now generally for, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back here, generally on the listserv, the Aceware listserv, um, your technician or your keeper of the flame should be able to add you to that. If you're getting announcements of the Aceware webinars, you are on the listserv. Again, that is open to any Aceware customer, representative, user in the system. There's no fee for it. It's for people with a support agreement. So again, you can add as many people as you want to the to the webinar ser or to the uh, to the listserv. And again, if you don't know how to add somebody to the listserv, you can go in to uh, call your tech, uh, send an email of the person's, uh, send the email of the people you want added to your user, to your Aceware tech. I'm get this right, to your Aceware tech, and we'll add them to the listserv. Or send it to Lori and I, and we'll make sure they get added to the listserv. <clears throat> so uh, we were back to the forum now. The forum is a place for users to actually interact with each other. One of the things that would be a definite issue for your keeper of the flame is that there is a student manager update area, which is where you can log into, again, by creating a forum account, that you can get notices on the various releases. Here's the most current release of our 8.0 series and it'll basically report for you bug fixes, new features. So again, it is a way for you to keep up to date with your student manager. Um, again, this would be primarily for the keeper of the flames out there. And again, if you would like to be notified whenever we don't send a notice to the big list serve every time there's an update, because we've been doing one about every week lately, but we do post it on the forum. There is a way that you can go to the forum, and again, once you're logged into the forum, there is actually a section on how you can get an automatic update of any notice posted to the student manager updates. So that will guarantee you'll get an email anytime Matthew does an update of student manager. So again, that's a resource. We can help you out with that through your tech or by going in, creating an account in the Aceware forum and uh, you'll need to register uh, once we know who you are. We confirm that, that you're one of, one of ours. Uh, we'll, we'll let you into the forum. All right. Uh, Lori, questions? Any chat going on on this? No. no I think we're pretty good. All right. Good. We're about ready to get things uh, finished, the slideshow part, and then we'll get back and we'll take a look at help and maybe get some comments or tips from Cheryl. Um, again, back to the website in terms of where we are going to get support, uh, help, uh, sign up for these other resources. And we talked about the forum. Uh, other elements, again, the listserv, we talked about that, is that contact your tech or send Lori and I an email with the people whom you want to add to the listserv. We just need their email address. 
um, newsletter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, events page, we actually put lists of where we're going to be uh, coming up in the next few months as far as um, marketing or as far as conferences and events. We've just decided to become a partner with the uh, UPSEA marketing uh, seminar in Atlanta, and Lori will actually be representing Aceware there. Sharon will be at the Learn Conference, uh, and then I'll be attending the Center for Management Event Directors in uh, St. Pete <clears throat> for this fall. So, 9-11, uh, and again, if we talk about help, one of the things that I want to make sure we cover is emergency procedures. If you have a dead system, your system is locked, your system is down, you've got a bug, you've got a problem, and the world in Aceware has come to an end. I mean, it's stopped. You can't do anything. Uh, that is an emergency, and there are ways you can get help. Here's a question for you. If you have an emergency, would you, house burning down, you've had an accident, you need police help, so what is the first response? Are you just going to email the fire department? Well, the answer to that is no, you're not going to just email the fire department. You're going to do all the resources in your power. The same thing should apply if you have an issue with ACEWARE, uh, where you really are stopped up. If this is an actual ACEWARE emergency, yes, do send an email to your ACEWARE tech. But also call that tech and get them on the phone. Well, if they're not picking up, don't leave a voicemail. That tech may actually have been called out on an emergency. They may not get back to that phone message for a while. And especially if you're calling 5 o'clock, the end of a business day, or the on a Friday, and you leave a voicemail. does not help. So what you want to do is call the main line, hit the zero for operator, and you'll get the first technician on the phone and they'll be able to help you out. So again, that business of sending an email, our ACEWARE uh, system is down, our student manager is locked up, send an email, but do make that phone call. And I don't know how, again, I, I think most of you know this, but again, don't stop with just an email or even voicemail for your tech. Call till you get a person. You say, well, what if it is a 11 o'clock at night or it's a Saturday morning. For after hours emergencies, you can we do have a special extension for the voicemail part on an app for after hours phone that if you hit extension 5, it will forward to the on-duty tech cell phone. So again, you can get help even if it is after hours. Now, a tip, um, if that cell, if that tech happens to be out of service, uh, they're down in a canyon somewhere right now, and they, they don't get the message. Uh, wait a half an hour uh, and call that number and uh, do the extension 5 as many times as you need until you get to that person's phone. Because, again, that tech may have subject to the normal cell phone service coverage issues, wherever they might be, <clears throat> that we can get you help. Cheryl, Lori, anybody want to add in on that or if there's any... Uh, users want to pipe in on that because I want this is of course stuff that we want to make sure that you know you can do. Yeah, Lori, if you have an emergency and you send me an email, put like urgent help well, needed in all caps but, in the subject but, line. <laughs> well well I, I, again but but you still you still should make that phone call. And again Lori uh, where she is um, uh, you know away from the main office is a little bit different. But even if you call that eight hundred number get Lori's extension and she doesn't answer, um, again, call back and do that zero to get to a operator and we'll, we'll help you track down Lori or we'll give you some help. So, All right, well, enough said on that. Uh, so again, in terms of error messages in general, uh, uh, again, as part of the emergency or general support, obviously this is key and we're going to cover this in the top ten. So. What are the ways you can help us help you? And I ended up making this, um, uh, again, calling to know your version number, know where you're at. And this is really um, not necessarily in this order. There's a lot of stuff there. Let me kind of just go through it. Number one, the big thing, and, and we ask text to actually give us feedback. And so we've, we've got a compilation of things. Communicate your problem. 
<clears throat> if you're, as Lori said, if you're emailing a message to the tech, put in the subject of what it is. Problem with running a report. Error on the name screen. Uh, to kind of help that tech even on a, the email, and obviously your body would have more detail. Screenshots are helpful. The old picture worth a thousand words. But sending a screenshot without any notes of what was happening or what you had done is not as useful. Know the who, what, when, whoa, come back. Know the who, what, when, where version number. What were you doing when the problem occurred? Uh, if it was a report, what reporting area? What kind of report? Default, additional. If you were entering data, where was it? Were you on the name record? Were you editing a payment? Were you adding a registration, editing a registration? Again, that's the kind of stuff that is important. It's also helpful to let the tech know if anybody else is having the same problem. Uh, and again, a lot of times things that are network issues, access denied, file in use, file not found, uh, would be things that it might relate to a specific workstation or your particular permissions or access to the server that Acework can, is on. Again, Aceware, whereas we know a lot of stuff, we're not the primary hardware support for your shop. If your printer isn't working, then contact your tech first. And <clears throat> again, if you're completely out of luck on that, I know our techs have helped people in the past on that. On a report wish, and I, this is one that generally is an emergency, but people say, I need a report on, I'd like to have a report on this. Uh, you know, saying, I'd like a good registration report. Well, you're good and our good and what the word good means isn't very helpful unless you actually can give that tech some kind of a, let me get you, let me try to get a little bit, um, you know, let me get a little bit of a spotlight going on here. So again, uh, if you, if you can give your tech a mock-up of what what the what you want and again here's a good one if you're kind of at the low you're at the bottom end of the food chain if you're getting a third fourth hand request about a report let the tech get with the originator so if you're hearing you say well uh, the, the the supervisor got a note from the department head who got a note from the associate dean who got a note from the dean that the president wants well, maybe the president wouldn't be, but move your tech up the food chain to as close to the original request for information as you can. Or again, if you're the you're the person within the shop there, ask up the food chain what exactly is the format, layout, style, data elements that you want on the report. Obviously, it's the if we know the question more clearly we can certainly give you a lot better answer. The last, one of the others, ask, plead, threaten your IT group to let you be updated and informed about system updates, software version updates, hardware updates that certainly might affect the operation of your student manager. Um, almost uh, next to last, check with your keeper of the flame before calling your tech. And uh, I guess in terms of we've been pretty flexible about allowing anybody from the shop to call, but we really would prefer that if you're a larger organization, you identify and make sure your users, the folks who use Student Manager in the shop, know who the primary contact is. So at, <clears throat> at, at your organization, you would try to make sure that your staff check with the Keeper of the Flame before calling Aceware because you might know that answer and that keeps the tech from basically reinventing the wheel and it makes sure you're, uh, you, you as the keeper of the flame, as the manager there within the organization, have some control over what kind of information your staff are doing. So again, there's generally standard operating procedures that you're going to want to follow. And speaking of that, Lori, I'm trying to think you any update on the this is a this is a sidebar. I didn't tell Lori I was going to cover this, but the the standard operating procedures project we were working on, are you done some work on? I have done some work on it, but it's not ready for consumption yet. Okay. So. 
Um, Lori has been shepherding, uh, along with many other hats, the Keeper uh, or a Standard Operating Procedures uh, Guidelines uh, project. And again, hopefully at some point here we'll have uh, some response on that. And then finally, the very last one, Aceware is broke is not a helpful message if you're trying to get some help from an Aceware tech. So again, toward that end, here's a one, and again, I thought Lindsay had done this pretty well. Sample message. I'm having a problem with what I did thus and so. And as I did that, at what point in the process, some point in the process, something happened. And if you have a screenshot, and this either has been happening or it has never happened before, so the tech kind of knows if this is a one-off thing or if this is an ongoing kind of an issue. I think that's actually a pretty good script for how you might go about collecting your thoughts and your data <clears throat> as you're working with, a, working with a tech. So let a couple more questions here. Again, this is kind of back to the idea of what you want on your report. So the idea of a mock-up, here's exactly what I'd like to see, and here's kind of the info, and here are the fields I'd like to have them show up. That will help your tech uh, amazingly. Uh, the other tip, and again, kind of Lori is a, if you're a diary keeper, but I guess the idea is keeping notes on your side of the house. If you've got a, um, a log file of some kind uh, for the users, uh, either strange things or odd things or uh, here's an error that happened, <clears throat> keep some notes on that so we know uh, the idea. It happened uh, lots of times, and well, lots of times is twice in the last year, or lots of times might be three times in the last week. Well, I guess from our point of view, three times in the last week is a lot of times. Twice in the past year, not so much. <clears throat> and obviously, um, it's uh, three times in the past week is absolutely, definitely, we agree. That's an issue we need to, we're going to try to jump on that. Um, Aceware Techs, and again, I always kind of, this, this is one that's cute if you haven't seen this, and I think Jason put this together, the idea, what do my friends think I do? We, we, we play games with, uh, with, with weapons here. What my mom thinks I do, you know, executive flying in the corporate jet. I don't think Aceware has a corporate jet, unless well, someone hasn't told me. What my clients think I do, in other words, the, the geek whiz, what I think I do, and again, you know, multiple hats here, they actually do do that. I know I really don't think that my staff do that, you know, snooze on the keyboard. But what I really do, I go to the Aceware Online Help. So again, we're kind of bringing that back to the online help guide that we're going to talk about. Um, so questions, comments, things about online help we want to explore. I do want to cover a couple of things. So Lori, any, any buzz on this? People are just in awe and amazement. <laughs> well, good. Well, they should be. They should be. And, and it, uh, on the help. Well, the help, it, it's kind of like until you need help, you don't know where to start with it. It's kind of like riding a bicycle without any place to go. Uh, but um, let me just do a couple of quick notes, and then we'll go back to the help guide, and we'll cover a couple of things in a, in a, in a few minutes here. Uh, number one, again, the newsletter. We talked about signing up on the website for the newsletter. Um, users conference dates April 21, 24, and then finally our next webinar, SM8 update. And again, SM8's been out for several months. Uh, we've been working on some performance issues. We're going to give you a couple of notes about new features that we've added to help with performance, some user tips, and that will be in a couple of weeks. So. Um, while we're waiting for any other questions then, I'm going to roll back to the help guide and actually navigate through, um, I'm going to navigate through a couple of examples. Okay, my screen up, every you, you, response pretty good, Lori? You kind of see me? Keeping up pretty around? well, surprisingly, given how yeah. slow things are everywhere else. Right. Well, uh, number one, uh, again, the idea of the organization, we are organized by category, courses, names, faculty, payments, registrations. Um, as we said, um, we've got a couple of organized elements here at the top. If you're the keeper of the flame, uh, there are some particular sub, uh, 
topics here that really address some of the needs that you might have. We're going to click on Home to go back to Home. If you're a new user, we talk about the uh, steps of going about working through the system uh, for new users. Um, the other thing about new users, you can actually go to the pane, the ta table of contents, and in the SM123, you have also kind of a sequence set of steps for a new user and how to use the system. Um, By the way, Dr. Find... Carroll says she fixed your hovers. Oh, the hovers so are back in there now under archive. Very good. All right. Thank yeah. you. Um, so that uh, what's new, and of course these are for if you're just getting 8.0 or you're getting ready to look at 8.0, uh, what are the things that are new in 8.0? Um, can't find a topic. And again, the topic search, um, we actually have now, if, if you're searching for a particular keyword and you're just, you're not getting any results, uh, shoot an email. There's actually now a quick email element. Um, the, the topic search is basically exact match of whatever keywords you put in. So if you're searching for a particular phrase and we happen to use a little bit a different phrase, and again, that's where the, the taxonomy would be a way to kind of look at uh, these are key terms that we use. And if it's, more, if it's going to be helpful to put in more key terms in there, we'll be happy to do that. Um, okay. I... Um, the other thing I want to reference, and again, if you're a report writer, if you're the person who does reports, one of the areas that I think people find most helpful is the screen layout tool. So that by clicking under, under reports, screen layout, you actually can go and look at individual screens, the, a live screen. If you hover over one of the fields in the screen, you'll get a pop-up showing the field name. So under the last name, it's NM name 3. And if I click on that, it'll actually tell us what the field name is, again, what table it's from, the length of the field, and the character. So again, begin to give you an idea of uh, when you're trying to build reports or you're saying, well, I want to do a, a query, but I want to search for something, and I don't know, you know, what is that? What is actually the name of that particular field? Um, I'm going to go one more thing back to Aceware, and again, back to let's do a refresh and see if that settles that in. So there's the pop-up that uh, Cheryl was talking about. So now that when you hover over the title, <clears throat> it'll give you a pop-up of what that description is. Um, the other help, and again, as far as online help, and this is primarily for, again, the Keeper of the Flame, we do have a customer-only section of resources. And these are resources you'll see on the right, Shortcut Keys Templates, which is the shortcut key uh, template you can print out for your users. Um, uh, guides and training manuals. There are a variety of guides and manuals that you can download. New user guide, administrative guide, training manual. Um, there are white papers where you can uh, document how to use code, some notes, some best practices. And then there is a report template area where you can actually look at some different model reports you can see the description, and you can actually download the files and import those into your system. Uh, course reports, name reports, registration reports, financial reports. Again, you may have these in your report system, uh, but if you have an old database, you may not have the most current one. Uh, this, again, is a resource you can go to and, and get some help. And then finally, Aceware Tools. <clears throat> and these are some of the new options, the zip backup tool, uh, these the mapping tool, the catalog of the um, email uh, template uh, tools. And again, these are all ones that are free. There's no cost to you if you have a support agreement. Uh, we'll give you the username and login to, to, to download those. Uh, Cheryl, uh, back to the help guide. I'm trying to think, are there any other 
things you'd want to ask or, or Lori, have we gotten any uh, any other comments or thoughts in there uh, about using the help guide? Hopefully everybody knows where it is. They got some navigation tools. I had a couple questions about how you sign up for the forum. Okay, uh, Cheryl, you had a comment before we go to the forum well, then. So the only thing I was going to suggest is you've got that credit card um, value you searched for. Right. If you search, if you just put two words in there, without um, it, it's going to return all topics that have either credit card or credit or card. If you're okay. looking for a phrase, enclose it in quotes. Okay. So now the idea of this is, um, so what we're saying, and this is like a typical search mode. If I wanted the word credit card or credit card processing we'd want to enclose that. That'll help you get better better search results, although I think you just put a double two. Yeah, close there you go. There. Credit card processing. Okay, so now we've got a lot limited. If we were to include credit card and processing without that, oh my goodness, 44 results. So yeah, that will help you search that. Now is there is there a search terms tip somewhere in there? That's the first thing on a how to use this guide option. If you go how to that to use, page. How to use this guide. Searching for topics. The there we go. How to use the online reference guide. Search topics. So you've, we've got tips on how to use the tips. So yeah. uh, very good. Very good. Um, Lori, I think um, we've covered a lot of ground. Yeah. There's a lot of help out there. Help preservers are everywhere. <laughs> We do go one more time back to the forum page and show people where to sign up because we oh the the forum back. yes there we go <clears throat> get back to the help guide I just left it uh, student manager help guide okay so <clears throat> to sign up for the forum you would click on Aceware forums I'm already logged in but there would be a um, well, I'm not sure if you get this panel or not, but on the Aceware forum itself, there would be a register box where you would click on the register. I think Cheryl and J Jason's our expert on this. I think you can actually view some of the contents of the forum even if you're not registered. It's just that if you wanted to go in and make comments in the forum, uh, or you want to be automatically notified if anyone posts to a particular area, and this is like the update area for student manager releases, uh, you do have to register. But yeah, right from the little register button, it'll ask you about two or three things, name, email, and firm. We'll send that in to Jason. He'll verify that you work for the University of South Alabama or wherever and approve you as being a participating member. So. Pretty easy. We're happy to bring you on. So, all right. Any uh, anything else? That's about it. All right. Again, we want to thank Cheryl, and again, uh, who has been our uh, person who really has built out all of the th the wonderful things in the in the online help guide. Uh, Lori, we thank you again. We will have this posted in webinar archive within a fortnight. And we'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks to talk about all the new and latest, greatest features in Student Manager 8. Um, so we'll let you go. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.